Hello students, welcome to Affairs Cloud. My name is Vikas. We have an app by the name Careers Cloud which you can go and download through Play Store. Once you have downloaded the application, you will be able to easily log in using your Gmail ID. Once you have logged in, you will be redirected to this page where you will be getting this UI and there will be option for home, all courses, my courses and doubt section. On this application, you will be getting multiple PDFs, multiple content on daily basis that will be enhancing your learning. Our first segment is daily current affairs. We make sure to provide you current affairs on daily basis in both English as well as in Hindi content. The PDFs for the same are uploaded on our application. And apart from this, we also make sure to provide you with quizzes that will help you to revise the content after you have gone through the PDF. Next comes our weekly content. The content is also provided in both English as well as in Hindi. And here we also make sure to provide you quiz also of that past week's current affairs that will be enhancing your learning as it is a compilation of the important topics, important MCQ questions for the last week. Similar for the monthly, the PDFs are very important. They provide you insights of various topics as well as we also make sure to provide you the quiz of monthly questions that are very important for learning. Next, we also provide you with important PIB articles on daily basis so that you can go through these particles and have an insight about that particular topic. Not just this, we also make sure to provide you important events that are happening globally and make sure to give you the right analysis. One of the most important segment of our application is that we make sure to provide you with the correct exam analysis. When you are having exam, we make sure to provide you with the previous year questions so that the student can go through the exam pattern and the syllabus and can prepare the exam accordingly based on the pattern. After the exam, we also make sure to provide you with the exam analysis. Then for the students who are preparing for state exams, they will be also beneficial here as we will make sure to provide with state wise current affairs for them. Apart from this, we also make sure to cover the topic wise current affairs such as your national affairs, government schemes, international affairs, banking and finance, economy and businesses as these are the topics from which the examiner definitely asks the question and these are covered on the monthly basis. So friends, do check our application. It will be a one stop solution for learning. Apart from this friends, Carrier Scout is hiring. We are looking for candidates for subject matter experts in quants reasoning and English and also we are looking for a content creator for current affairs topic on daily basis, weekly basis and monthly basis. There is also an opening for a person who can translate the English content into Hindi. If you want to apply, you can scan the code here for further details or you can go to the description and click the link below. These positions are available both in full time and freelance for serious candidates. Hello everyone, so in this video we will be discussing important current affairs for 9th of April. The session will be very important and interesting so do pay attention till the end and you will be learning multiple things so do take notes they will be very beneficial for your learning. Let's start. First is REC PDCL it handed over Kalam Transco Limited SPV to whom? So REC PDCL right what is this? REC Power Development and Consultancy Limited. I repeat, REC Power Development and Consultancy Limited. It has this is a wholly owned subsidiary of REC, correct? This is a wholly owned subsidiary of REC Limited, and it has handed over two projects of special purpose vehicles that are named Kalam Transco Limited. This was transferred to whom? And second was your Jalpara Khujrao Power Transmission Limited, and it was transferred to whom? Correct. So these are the two important things that you need to remember here. So REC PDCN that is a wholly owned subsidiary of REC. It handed over the Kalam Transco Limited SPV to Indigrid. And the second one that is Jalpura Khurja Power Transmission Limited SPV. This was transferred to Tata Power. So I repeat again, REC PDCL that is a wholly owned subsidiary of REC. It handed over Kalam Transco Limited Special Purpose Vehicle to Indigrid and the Jalpara Khurja Power Transmission Limited SPV. It was transferred to Tata Power. 
correct and these spvs form the implementation of the two power transmission projects if we talk about this kallam transco limited spv here you can see this kallam transco limited was formed for the western region network expansion scheme in the kallam area of maharashtra this is an interstate transmission project of the ministry of power of government of india and the special purpose vehicle was handed over to ms indigrid 2 limited and indigrid 1 limited consortia second jalpura khurja power transmission limited this special purpose vehicle was formed for the construction of 400 by 220 kilowatt and 2 by 500 megawatt amperes gas insulated switch gear substation metro depot in greater noida in uttar pradesh with associated lines and 400 by 200 kilowatt 2 into 500 mva gis substation in jalpura up so they will be in greater noida and jalpura in uttar pradesh then this is an inter intrastate project of the government of uttar pradesh and spv has been handed over to ms the tata power company limited that is jalpura khurja power transmission limited handed over to tata power and kallam transco limited it is handed over to whom it is handed over to indigrid correct take a note of this then if we talk about rec pdcl that is rec power development and consultancy limited who is the chairman here chairman is vivek kumar devangan it was incorporated in 2007 headquarter is in gurugram haryana correct now we talk about some of the companies that uh, if we talk about some of the other questions like for example REC Power Development Consultancy Limited right this we saw that this is a wholly owned subsidiary of REC Limited and it handed two project specific special purpose vehicles and these are those special purpose vehicles that was handed over moving on next news india sets the target to produce 100 gigawatt by what year so india is on the target to produce 100 gigawatt of and this is nuclear energy by which year so the targeted here is 2047 as in this year india will achieve 100 years of independence and that is the reason 100 gigawatt of renewable energy or 100 gigawatt of nuclear energy will be produced here right this data remember this was launched on the sidelines of this report by ak mohanty right this is the report and on the sidelines on the launch of this report ak mohanty who is the chairman of atomic energy commission that is aec mentioned that india aims to produce 100 gigawatt of nuclear energy by 2047 correct apart from this if we talk about the department of atomic energy they it is preparing a vision document for amrit kal that aims to achieve nuclear capacity of about 1 lakh megawatt by 2047 the breed reactors would help to generate 3 gigawatt of nuclear power whereas the light reactors built with international cooperation would generate around 17.6 gigawatt of nuclear power while the pressurized heavy water reactors would generate about 40 to 45 gigawatts of nuclear power right apart from this the report also suggested that if india aim to phase down the coal usage in the next 30 years then it requires building suitable infrastructure for alternative resources such as nuclear power and also it requires setting up flexible grid infrastructure and storage to support the integration of renewable energy and the electricity consumption by the end users will increase that is 18% as of now to 47 to 57% electricity share in the total final electricity consumption not just this friends we just saw this report right this was released if we talk about this this report synchronizing energy transition towards possible net zero for india affordable and clean energy for all report this report it was released by professor ajay kumar sood who is the principal scientific advisor to the government of india and he released the report on 3rd of april 24 2022 at vigyan bhavan in new delhi the report was prepared by indian institute of management andabad gujarat if the name of institute being asked here is this and if the name of person who released the report ajay kumar sood correct if we talk about atomic energy commission aec who is the chairman we just saw ajay ajit kumar ak mohanty right let me correct here here you can see ak mohanty what is the full form of ak mohanty that stands for ajit kumar 
Mohanty. Right? And on the sidelines of this report, he gave this information and this is about the generating 100 gigawatt of nuclear energy by 2047. And he A.K. Mohati, that is Ajit Kumar Mohati, he is the chairman of Atomic Energy Commission. Moving on, next, Government of India to develop plant for recycling LIB and e-waste in which state? LIB is your lithium-ion batteries. I repeat, Government of India is planning for setting up a recycling plant for lithium-ion batteries and for electronic waste. Question asked here is, this will be set up in which state? So this plant for recycling of lithium ion batteries and e-waste will be located or will be set up in the state of Uttarakhand. Right? We all know lithium ion batteries. These are the batteries that are specifically used in your electric vehicles, your mobile phones, right? For your charging infrastructure and so on. If we look at this only, here you can see the Technology Development Board under the Department of Science and Technology, correct, has entered into an agreement with Remain India Private Limited, right? With this, Remain India Private Limited and it is to establish a commercial plant for recycling lithium-ion batteries and e-waste using indigenous technology in Sitar Ganj, Uttarakhand. So, let me show you here, which are the two organizations? It is TDB, that is Technology Development Board. They have recently entered into an agreement with Remain India private limited so these two organizations came together and the aim here was to set up a commercial plant for recycling and it will be recycling what lithium ion batteries and your electronic waste what is your electronic waste this comprises of your all the electronic equipment that are not working say for example your mobile so old mobile phones you are not working damaged laptops right damaged tablets damaged televisions and so on the total cost of this project is expected to be around 15 crore rupees this will be the total cost that is expected of this commercial recycling plant for lithium ion batteries and e-waste that is set up by jointly by tdb that is technology development board and remind india private limited next thing can be asked is about the location where this will be set up, location is important, that is Sitarganj in Uttarakhand. Right? The new recycling plant will be set up at Eldeco in State Infrastructure and Industrial Development Corporation, Uttarakhand Limited, industrial area in Sitarganj, Udham Singh Nagar district. That is in where? That is in Uttarakhand. Now, if we look at some of the project review here, through the agreement, Technology Development Board, they have committed financial assistance of 7.5 crore rupees out of the total project. This aims to enhance circularity and reduce India's reliance on imported critical mineral resources. The indigenous technology developed by the Center for Materials for Electronics Technology, CMET, Hyderabad, Telangana, is used for the efficient recycling of the lithium-ion batteries. Then, this will be a vital source of secondary raw materials for cell manufacturing within India and around 78% of e-waste are not being collected in India. E-waste are the secondary raw materials of gold, silver, copper and rare earth metals. Next, apart from this, remember the escalating imports of e-waste particularly from spent LIB that is lithium ion batteries underline the importance of recycling initiatives to mitigate the environmental and safety concerns the disposable of lithium ion batteries through landfilling and incineration processes environmental and safety hazards right it possesses means uh, these if we are just throwing away these lithium ion batteries in a land and then covering it with a uh, soil that is a uh, wrong way of basically disposing of a waste because these lithium ion batteries they contain chemicals correct and that will pollute your land in which you are disposing it then technology development board support will facilitate informal recyclers to collaborate with the formal recyclers promoting a circular economy and lithium ion battery recycling market is projected to reach 14.89 billion dollar by 2030 with a compound annual growth rate of 21.6 percent up from 3.979 billion in 2021 
नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट रिमेंबर सेंट्रल कोल्ड फील्ड लिमिटेड अनवेल्ड न्यू लोगो एज यू कैन सी हेयर दिस इज द न्यू लोगो सी सी एल सेंट्रल कोल्ड फील्ड लिमिटेड दे एन अनवेल्ड देयर ऑफिशियल ब्रांड न्यू लोगो विद टैग लाइन फ्यूलिंग सस्टेनेबल ग्रोथ हेयर यू कैन सी दिस इज द टैग लाइन दैट इज फ्यूलिंग सस्टेनेबल ग्रोथ सी सी एल फॉर्मली नेशनल कोल डेवलपमेंट कॉरपोरेशन लिमिटेड दिस इज अ कैटेगरी वन मिनी रत्ना सी पी एस यू कंपनी दैट इज सिचुएटेड इन रांची झारखंड सी सी एल इज वन ऑफ द इलेवन फुल्ली ऑन सब्सिडरीज ऑफ कोल इंडिया लिमिटेड विच आर द अदर सब्सिडरीज दैट इज भारत कुकिंग कोल लिमिटेड सेंट्रल कोल फील्ड लिमिटेड ईस्टर्न कोल्ड फील्ड लिमिटेड वेस्टर्न कोल्ड फील्ड लिमिटेड साउथ ईस्टर्न कोल्ड फील्ड लिमिटेड नॉर्दर्न कोल्ड फील्ड लिमिटेड महानदी कोल्ड फील्ड लिमिटेड योर सेंट्रल माइन प्लानिंग एंड डिजाइन इंस्टीट्यूट एंड सो ऑन करेक्ट देन रिमेंबर फॉर दिस सेंट्रल कोल्ड फील्ड लिमिटेड राइट सी सी एल दे हैव प्रोड्यूस्ड एटी सिक्स पॉइंट वन मिलियन टन्स ऑफ कोल इन द Financial year ट्वेंटी फोर करेक्ट नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट इज विच कंट्री हैज लॉन्च अ न्यू गोल्ड बैक्ट करेंसी सो इट इज जिम्बाबे जिम्बाबे रिसेंटली दे हैव लॉन्च गोल्ड बेस्ड और गोल्ड बैक्ट करेंसी दैट इज जेड आई जी करेक्ट टेक अ नोट दिस एंड द एम हेयर वॉज टू रिप्लेस योर जिम्बाबे डॉलर दिस विल रिप्लेस योर जिम्बाबे dollars why they launched a gold backed currency gold is considered to be highly safe instrument of investment right so whenever in earlier days also the currencies used to be backed by gold because it is considered a very safe instrument and the fluctuation of price in gold is very less the volatility is very less correct so in order to ensure that their currency value remains same and it does not fluctuates with inflation or any other thing or because of any geopolitical area because because of the dollar the we have also seen in india that the now dollar is close to in india that is around 83 rupees correct 1 dollar that used to be sometimes back say for example 70 rupees or 60 rupees also back in the days what is this the gold or the dollar is now devaluing our currency right the value of indian rupee is getting lost against dollar now right we are weakening against dollar but correct so similarly what zimbabwe thought was that why don't we back our currency with dollar uh, back our currency with gold and as the price of gold will fluctuate our price of currency will also fluctuate correct this will give them stability the important the most important reason for launching this new gold backed currency was stability right stability in their currency here you can see reserve bank of zimbabwe launched new currency zimbabwe gold that was backed by gold and foreign currencies to replace their local currency zimbabwe dollar that is a real time gross settlement dollar correct and here you can see reserve bank of zimbabwe this is your zimbabwe gold backed currency apart from this remember rbz that is reserve bank of zimbabwe has notified to confer they have notified the banks that they should convert uh, convert the current zimbabwe dollar balance into zig that is your zimbabwe gold currency with effect from 5th of april and these zimbabwe gold notes and coins will start circulating in the economy on 30th of april the banks will continue to accept zimbabwean dollar deposit for a period of 21 days after 5th of april if we talk about this zimbabwe gold this currency is backed by a composite basket of foreign currency and precious metals mainly gold the initial exchange of exchange rate of zimbabwe gold is set at 13.56 zimbabwe gold per us dollar and the new notes and coins will be issued in the denominations of 1 or 1 zimbabwean gold 2 5 10 20 50 100 and 200 and so on correct then remember zimbabwe they adopted us dollar in 2009 to counter the hyperinflation they were facing this new zimbabwe dollar was introduced in zimbabwe in 
correct so first they adopted us dollar then zimbabwe dollar was adopted by them in 2019 and now this rtgs dollar has lost three quarter of their value in 2024 and the currency has lost almost 100 percent of its value against the us greenback in 2023 and now in 2024 they have launched the gold back currency that is ziz correct so take a note of this moving on next Next is SIDB. They have partnered with which organization to provide micro loans to gig workers? So SIDB, they have partnered with Onion Life to provide micro loans to gig workers. What is SIDB? SIDB stands for Small Industries Development Bank of India. And this is basically an organization that provides loans to small businesses to help them grow or to help MSMEs to help them grow. So they have partnered with Onion Life. This is a Bangalore or oh sorry, Bangalore, Bangalore, Karnataka based fintech startup. And they have launched they or they have partnered with them to provide them micro loans to gig workers. Now, what are gig workers? Gig workers, if we look at gig workers are the people who earn through short term jobs rather than traditional permanent employment. They are often freelancers or independent contractors in the service sector right so sidbi they have partnered with bengaluru karnataka based fintech startup onion private Lim onion life private limited and it is to use technology platform karma life for a pilot to offer micro loans to gig workers this will enhance the financial inclusion in india's gigs economy and if we talk about this karma life platform this will enable gig workers to access micro loans through a mobile app eliminating extensive paperwork this will support gig workers to manage the liquidity needs of the enterprise activities and assess their credit risk fostering financial inclusion this partnership will help the bank understand the assist and the need of emerging enterprise class of gig workers while developing a mechanism to assess their credit risk if we talk about sidbi Who is the chairman and managing director? Shiva Subramanyam Ramanji, headquarter Lucknow UP, and it was established in 1990. And remember, Lucknow UP, this will be the first AI based city that will be developed in India, and it is in UP. Next, next, remember, Tata Mutual Fund introduced six index funds, three industry first. I repeat. On 8th of April, Tata Mutual Fund, Tata Asset Management Private Limited, they have launched six index funds offering new investment opportunities with a minimum investment of 5,000 rupees during the NFO period, which runs from April 8th to April 2022. The new index funds are Tata Nifty Auto Index Fund, Tata Nifty Reality Index Fund, Tata Nifty Financial Service Index Fund, and the other three are industry first, that is Tata Nifty Mid Small Healthcare Index Fund, Tata Nifty 500 Multicap India Manufacturing 503020 Index Fund, and Tata Nifty Multicap 503020 Infrastructure Index Fund. Now we will look at these funds. First is your Tata Nifty mid small healthcare index fund this will keep track of the mid cap and small cap healthcare stocks that comprises up to 30 selections from the nifty mid small cap 400 index with top constituents like max healthcare institute and lupin then second tata nifty 50 multi cap and india manufacturing 50 30 20 index fund this will follow large cap mid cap and small cap stops in the same ratio representing the manufacturing theme from the nifty 500 index with fixed weightage distribution and tata nifty 50 multi cap 50 30 20 infrastructure index similarly this will track in infrastructure sector for large cap mid cap and small cap in the same ratio in the infrastructure theme from nifty 50 comprising a total of 75 stocks with fixed weightage then comes your tata nifty auto index fund this will be talking about automobile sector which includes manufacturers of cars motorcycles heavy vehicles and other then for reality index fund this is open-ended scheme replicating the nifty reality index suitable for long-term capital appreciation and tata nifty financial service fund this is an open-ended scheme tracking the nifty financial service index benchmarked against the nifty financial service index it is constructed with a minimum of 20 maximum of 20 stocks that imposes strict limits on single stock weight not exceeding 33 percent of the total weight and restricts the cumulative weight of the top three stocks to not more than 62 percent 
right so these are the new funds then if we talk about tata mutual fund that is tata asset management private limited who is the chairman here rajiv sabrawal headquarter mumbai maharashtra established in 1994 moving on next next is canara bank canara bank and sign of iit bombay partnered to empower startups across india what is sign sign is society for innovation and entrepreneurship this is a society of iit bombay and canara bank they together partner to empower the startups across india take a note of this right and here you can see under the canara bank startup scheme financial assistance at an attractive return on investment will be provided for established promotion and modernization correct here sign this society for innovation and entrepreneurship that is of iit bombay this was established in 2004 as an umbrella organization at iit bombay that acts as a tech incubator and offers end to end support for startups and ensuring their success next next is emsl signed agreement with ifc to raise funds worth 3000 330 crore rupees i repeat amsl that is artemis medicare service limited they have signed a definitive agreement with ifc international finance corporation correct that is a member of the world bank group and this was to raise 330 crore rupees in the form of compulsorily convertible debentures that is in the form of ccds here the ifc's investment will assist amsl in enhancing healthcare accessibility and the quality by supporting its growth plans in bed capacity correct then this will introduce newer medical treatment specialties and building cardiac care centers in tier 2 and tier 3 cities and this will encourage women to pursue careers in the medicine and advance their professional growth if we talk about ifc we just saw that international financial corporation or international finance corporation i correct international finance corporation remember this is an member of world bank group so remember AMSL Artemis Medicare Service Limited they partnered with IFC to provide a loan of 330 crore rupees in CCDs and here the main aim here is to provide new medical treatment specialties building cardiac care centers specifically in tier 2 and tier 3 cities and this will also encourage women to pursue their careers in the field of medicine next next is who is set to become as the new president of Slovak Republic. So, as you can see in the picture, Peter Pellegrini, correct? Peter Pellegrini, the former Prime Minister of Slovakia, is set to become the President of the Slovak Republic. Take a note of this. He won the Slovakia President elections 2024. He defeated whom? Ivan Korkok, a former diplomat with 53 percent of the votes. Peter Pellegrini won here. Peter Peter Pellegrini. He will succeed whom? He will be succeeding Zuzana Caputo. the first female president of slovakia correct and he will be inaugurated as the sixth president of slovakia on 15th of june 2024 so who is the new president of slovakia peter pellegrini he will succeed whom he will be succeeding zuzana kaputova correct and she was the first female president of slovakia next if we talk about peter pellegrini uh peter pellegrini is the chair of the social democracy party he founded the voice social democracy in 2020 and prior to this he was a member of the direction social democracy he served as the prime minister of slovakia from 2018 to 20 and minister of health from december 2019 to march 2020 he has also served as the deputy prime minister of slovakia from 2016 to 2018 and as a minister of education and science in 2014 he also served as the speaker of the national council from 2014 to 2016 next next is paris olympics bilikis mir i repeat Bilikis Mir became the first woman to represent India as a jury member. I repeat, Bilikis Mir, a water sports promoter and athlete, she is a canoeist. Correct, she is from Jammu and Kashmir, and she became the first woman from India to serve as a jury member at the 2024 Summer Olympics, which is set to be held in Paris, France, from 26th of July to 11th of August 
फोर बिलेकेस वॉज नॉमिनेटेड एज अ जूरी मेंबर बाय द इंडियन कायाकिंग एंड कैनोइंग एसोसिएशन इन टू थाउजेंड एट शी क्वालिफाइड एज अ जूरी मेंबर फॉर हर एग्जाम्पलरी कंडक्ट एंड परफॉर्मेंस एट द टॉप स्पोर्टिंग इवेंट इंक्लूडिंग द एशियन गेम्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री हेल्ड इन हॉन्गजो चाइना नेक्स्ट बैंड वैगन वन दिस इज द फर्स्ट राइड शेयर मिशन दैट वॉज लॉन्च बाय विच ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो बैंड वैगन वन दिस इज द फर्स्ट राइड शेयर मिशन दैट वॉज लॉन्च बाय स्पेस एक्स करेक्ट This was launched by SpaceX. What is SpaceX? Space Exploration Technologies Corporation. This is owned by Elon Musk, right? And they have launched Band Wagon One, the first rideshare mission to low Earth orbit at inclinations of about forty-five degrees with the help of the rocket Falcon Nine from NASA Kennedy Space Center in Florida, USA. Then remember, this Band Wagon One this carried eleven satellites, including the Korea's four to five set. Hawkeye 360 cluster 8 and 9, Tyvek International Century 6, IQPS QPS synthetic aperture radar SAR 7, Capella Space Capella 14, and Tata Advanced Systems Limited T Set 1A. These are the satellites that was carried by Band Wagon 1. Then a 4 to 5 project satellite for the military of South Korea was probably the largest of the 11 satellites that was carried by Band Wagon 1. That is 4 to 5 project satellite. This is of South Korea. Correct. Remember the first 4 to 5 project satellite, the one of the optical infrared spacecraft was launched with Falcon 9 rocket in December 2023. and india has listed the building of reusable rockets as one of their target of the decade for 2021 till 2030 this is the target of india that they also want to build reusable rockets correct who is the founder ceo and cto of spacex so elon musk where is the headquarter of uh, spacex california usa it was founded in 2002 next next we are talking about Japanese Grand Prix, right? Japanese Grand Prix was recently held at the Suzuka International Racing Course, that is in Suzuka, Japan. It was from fifth to seventh of April, and recently, remember here, who won this Suzuka Grand Prix or who won this Japanese Grand Prix? So, Belgian Dutch driver Max Verstappen, he drives for the company Red Bull, has won the F1 Japanese Grand Prix 2024 that was held at Suzuka International Racing Course. If we look at the positions here, first position Max Verstappen of Red Bull, second Sergio Perez of Red Bull, and third Carlos Sainz Jr. of Ferrari has secured these top three positions here. Then, if we look at this highlights of Japanese Grand Prix, the victory marks the Max Verstappen's third Japanese Grand Prix title after he won it in 2022, 2023, and now in 2024. He was also the second person to win three consecutive Japanese Grand Prix titles after Germany's Michael Schumacher, who retired with Ferrari and have won them in 2000, 2001, and 2002 respectively. The Japanese Grand Prix 2024 title marks Max Verstappen's third title of 2024 season. He previously won the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and Bahrain Grand Prix in 2024, and now Japanese Grand Prix also. It marks Max Verstappen's 57th win and 101st podium finish in his driving career. Apart from this, as of 8th of April 2024, Constructors Championship standing is topped by the Red Bulls Racing Honda Racing team with 141 points, followed by Ferrari 120 points in second and McLaren Mercedes in third position with 69 points. This constructors standing represents the points earned by finishing in the top positions of two drivers of the each team at each Grand Prix. Moving on, one more thing before moving on. Remember, if we talk about Max Verstappen, he is from he is a Belgian Dutch driver. If we talk about Sergio Perez, he is from Mexico. And Carlos Sainz Jr. He is from Spain. Correct. Moving on. Next is Obutri, former Irish footballer and Indian coach Joe Kiner recently passed away. As you can see him in the picture, Joe Kiner, correct, who served as the head coach of Indian national men's football team in 1983, passed away at the age of 77. He was born on 27th of December 1946 in Dublin, Ireland. Correct. Joe Kiner started his professional career with Tottenham Hotspur Football Club in 1965 and made around 250 appearances for Spurs. As a part of Spurs, 
ही वन द 1966-67 फुटबॉल एसोसिएशन चैलेंज कप 71-72 यूएफआ कप एंड द यूरोपियन लीग कप 1971 एंड 73 देन ही जॉइन ब्रिंगटन एंड होव एल्बियन फुटबॉल क्लब इन 1975 आफ्टर 12 सक्सेसफुल इयर्स एट टोटोहम देन ही बिगन हिज कोचिंग करियर आफ्टर हिज रिटायरमेंट इन 1977 ही हैज कोच द यूएई क्लब शारजा एंड अल शबाब देन अपार्ट फ्रॉम इंडिया ही आल्सो मैनेज द फुटबॉल टीम ऑफ नेपाल राइट नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट इज इंपॉर्टेंट इज इंटरनेशनल डे ऑफ रिफ्लेक्शन ऑन द नाइनटीन जेनोसाइड अगेंस्ट द Tutsi in Rwanda 2004 correct this day is observed on 7th of april this is annually observed across the globe on 7th of april to honor the memory of the victims who perished during the 1994 genocide this year 2024 it marks the 30th anniversary of the genocide against the tutsi in 1994 in rwanda On 23rd of December 2003, UN General Assembly adopted the resolution designating 7th of April every year as the International Day of Reflection on the Genocide in Rwanda. The first ever International Day of Reflection on the Genocide in Rwanda was observed on 7th of April 2004, which marked the 10th anniversary of the 1994 genocide in Rwanda. If we talk about the genocide in Rwanda 1994. The date 7 April marks the beginning of the 1994 genocide which lasted for 100 days till 15th of July. The tragic events here were the genocide saw the systematic murder of over 1 million Tutsi individuals by Hutu extremist led government in just over 100 days and the victims were not only Tutsi but also included moderate Hutu and others who opposed the massacre. Then if we talk about the title of the annual observation here remember on 26th of January 2018 United Nation General Assembly adopted a resolution designating 7th of April as the International Day of the Reflection on 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda Correct then apart from this if we talk about UNESCO's mission here UNESCO is dedicated to fostering education about genocides it aims to sensitize learners about the causes dynamics consequences of such crimes and works to strengthen the resilience against all forms of discrimination in 2023 UNESCO's World Heritage Committee recognized four genocide memorial sites in Rwanda to the list of world heritage sites Nyamta Murambi Biserero and Gisoji which where the kigali genocide memorial is located next next is your 2024 events marking the 30th anniversary that is the 30th edition of this day of this genocide against tutsi in rwanda unesco commissioned an exhibition that is remembering the genocides of the tutsi from 5th of april to 31st of may 2024 at unesco headquarter that is in paris france next is your world health day observed on 7th of april Correct UN World Health Day is a global health awareness day annually observed across the globe on 7th of April to draw attention to a specific health topic of concern to people worldwide. Then UN World Health Day observed on 7th of April is a global health awareness day annually observed across the globe to draw attention to specific health topic of concern to people worldwide and this marks the 76th anniversary of the founding of WHO in 1948 that is 7th of April 2020. Next remember the theme for the World Health Day is my health my right. Next remember first World Health Assembly in 1948 decided that WHO should sponsor the annual observance of the World Health Day on 22nd of July by all the state members. Schools and educational institutions were emphasized as important focal points in commemorating this day and on 22nd of July the most schools in many countries are closed and ineffective for the global observance and 7th april the date of inception of who constitution in 1948 was chosen as the suitable alternative for the observance next what are the challenges facing the global health if we look at it so around the world the right to health of millions is increasingly and this is under threat we are seeing multiple disease we are seeing poverty we are seeing that lack of nutrition is there in the people their body are not able to fight disease correct we are seeing conflicts various lives death pain hunger psychological distress and so on and burning of fuel is causing pollution in our climate air pollution is there due to which we are seeing that many lives are taken and we are also seeing that the disease that are related to air pollution are also on the rise if we talk about who headquarter is in geneva switzerland who is the director general tedros gibrasus 
नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट इज एन एम सी एंड एन टी एफ दे हैव टूगेदर लॉन्च माई हेल्थ माई राइट इनिशियटिव फॉर मेडिकल स्टूडेंट्स एंड प्रोफेशनल आई रिपीट ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड हेल्थ डे दैट इज सेवंथ ऑफ अप्रैल नेशनल मेडिकल कमीशन एंड नेशनल ट्रस्ट नेशनल टास्क फोर्स ऑन मेंटल हेल्थ एंड वेलबींग ऑफ मेडिकल स्टूडेंट्स लॉन्च इनोवेटिव इनिशियटिव दैट इज माई हेल्थ माई राइट दिस इनिशियटिव वॉज कॉर्डिनेटेड बाई एन एम सी एंटी रेजिंग कमेटी नेक्स्ट इज योर प्रिवेंशन ऑफ ब्लाइंडनेस वीक ऑब्जर्व फ्रॉम फर्स्ट टू सेवंथ ऑफ अप्रैल आई रिपीट प्रिवेंशन ऑफ ब्लाइंडनेस ब्लाइंडनेस वीक इट इज ऑब्जर्व फ्रॉम फर्स्ट टू सेवंथ ऑफ अप्रैल करेक्ट एंड इट इज टू क्रिएट अवेयरनेस अबाउट द फैक्टर्स कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टू ब्लाइंडनेस एंड हाईलाइटिंग द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ द लाइफ स्टाइल चॉइसिस देन देर इज अ थीम फॉर दिस प्रिवेंशन ऑफ ब्लाइंडनेस वीक वॉट इज द थीम हेयर दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर सी रिमेंबर दैट थीम ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर इज येट टू बी अनाउंसड as as soon as it is announced we'll let you know then remember this theme the annual observance of the prevention of blindness week is led by national society for prevention of blindness and this nspb india this is yet to choose the theme of this day this week is observed from when to when it is observed from 1st to 7th of april prevention of blindness week correct take a note of this apart from this the observance aims to educate people on the various eye injuries visual impairments effective preventive measures and so on the leading cause of vision impairment and blindness includes refractive errors cataracts diabetic glaucoma etc then the blindness is an inability to see or lack of vision resulting from infection accidents genetic condition and other disease and blindness can range from no vision at all to seeing the just the shapes apart from this according to who at least 2.2 billion people across the globe have near or distinct vision impairment in at least 1 billion of these a vision impairment could have been prevented or just yet to be addressed according to the census of 2011 almost 2 crore 68 lakh divyangan persons with disabilities are there in india out of which 50 lakh are persons with visual impairment right next next is about the national society for the prevention of blindness this was formed based on the resolution of the national association for the blind in 1959 it was registered on 24th of august 1960 under the society's registration act of 1860 then health minister of india rajkumari amrit kaur was elected as the first president of nspb and in 1962 then prime minister jawaharlal nehru was the chief patron so friends these are your important current affairs now let's move to one liner revision REC PDCL handed over Kallam Transco Limited Special Purpose Vehicle to Integrate and Jalpara Khurja Power Transmission Limited SPV to Tata Power. Then India is set to target to produce 100 gigawatt by 2047, according to AEC Chairman. Then Government of India to develop plant for recycling LIBs and e-waste that is lithium-ion batteries and e-waste recycling plant in Uttarakhand. Central Coal Fields Limited unveiled new logo. Zimbabwe they have launched their new gold backed currency that is ZIG that will replace Zimbabwean dollar then Sidbi and Onion Life they partner to provide micro loans to gig workers Tata Mutual Fund has introduced six index funds and three are industry first then Canara Bank and Sign of IIT this is a society of IIT Bombay that has partner to empower startups across India AMSL signed agreement with IFC to raise funds worth 330 crore rupees next Peter Pellegrini set to become the new president of Slovakia Paris Olympic Games here Bilikis Mir she became the first woman to represent India as a jury member Bandwagon 1 this was launched using Falcon 9 of SpaceX and this is the first ride share mission that took 11 satellites into space Bus, uh, Red Bull's Max Verstappen has won the Japanese Grand Prix 2024 former Irish footballer and Indian coach Joe Kiner recently passed away International Day of Reflection on the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda held on 7th of April. World Health Day 7th of April and Prevention of Blindness Week observed from 1st to 7th of April. So these were your important current affairs. Do like the video friends and comment below and let us know what are your views for the same. Now let's move to some revision part that will be very beneficial for your learning. Next, which of the following personalities won the Sports Star of the Year male? and sports star of the year female at the sports star aces award 2024 respectively so if we are talking about sports star of the year for male category neera chopra and for the female category sheetal devi so neera chopra won the sports star of the year in male category and sheetal devi has been won the Sports Star is a uh, Sports Star of the Year in female category this was during the Sports Star Aces Award 
respectively. Correct? Apart from this, Sheetal Devi, remember, she also won the Moment of the Year Award. Moment of the Year Award. Correct? And this event was held at Taj Mahal Palace that is in Mumbai, Maharashtra. Next, who has recently received a special award at the Lokmat Maharashtrian of the year 2024? So, who has recently received a special award at the Lokmat Maharashtrian of the year 2024? Isha Ambani. Right? Isha Ambani has received or has won the special award at the Lokmat Maharashtrian of the year 2024 ceremony held in Mumbai, Maharashtra. Isha Ambani was honored for her remarkable contribution in the field of business right her contribution in the field of business she was honored with the special award at the lokmat maharashtrian of the year 2024 next according to the 2023 burgundy private huron india 500 released by access banks burgundy private and huron india in feb which company has emerged as the india's most valuable company for the third consecutive year it is ril reliance industries limited has emerged as the India's most valuable company for the third consecutive year according to Burgundy Private Huron India 50 released by Axis Bank's Burgundy Private and Huron India combined together. The total cumulative value of the 2023 Burgundy Private Huron India 500 companies is close to 2.8 trillion dollar combined value we are talking about. If we are talking about Reliance Industries Limited which is on top correct it is followed by TCS it is followed by HDFC Bank. If we talk about the valuation of RIL, that is Reliance Industries Limited, it is close to 15 lakh 64 thousand crore rupees. For TCS, it is close to 12 lakh 36 thousand crore rupees. And for HDFC, it is close to 11 lakh 25 thousand crore rupees. Next, who has recently conferred with the Vishish Seva Medal for designing an innovative drone called a multi purpose octo? Copter. So, who recently conferred with the Vicious Seva Medal for designing an innovative drone called a multi purpose octocopter? So, he will be Virendra Singh, right? He is from Sikh Regiment and the, for, from the Sikh Regiment of Indian Army, correct? And he was ordered, uh, honored with this Vicious Seva Medal for designing an innovative drone that was called a multi purpose octocopter. He was one of the 130 Vicious Seva Medal awardees that were announced by President of India, Draupadi Murmuma. Next, in Feb, Ministry of Parliamentary Affairs honoured the winners of the 16th National Youth Parliament Competition for Universities and College 2019-2020, which university received the running shield and trophy for standing first at the national level. It is Central University of Punjab. Correct? So, they secured the top position here and the awards were presented by Arjun Ram Meghwalji, right? And the students of Central Punjab University that is in Bhatinda, Punjab received the running shield and a trophy for standing first at the national level. Next is our homework section. First, what is the theme of the World Health Day 24? Second, who became the first Indian to be appointed as the jury member at the 33rd Summer Olympics 2024 to be held in Paris? Third, Fengiri Buddhist site recently seen in news is located in which state? Fourth, Indian Coast Guard Aquatic Center has been inaugurated at which place? And fifth, Lunar Polar Exploration Mission that is LUPEX recently seen in news is a joint mission between which two space agencies? So these are your five homework questions and I need to see maximum participation from all the students watching this video. That's all for the day friends. I hope you enjoyed the session and you can follow us on the YouTube channel as well as apart from YouTube channel you can go and follow us at Affairs Cloud Telegram channel and if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application you can contact us on the number provided that is 76773382 apart from this friends you can follow us on the facebook as well as on instagram handle that is affairs cloud underscore official 
In the end friends, if you use a code that is Vikas10, you will be getting an additional extra 10% discount by using this code Vikas10. Also, if you have any problem regarding the course purchase, any problem regarding to our application, you can contact us on the mobile number that is 9677333862. And if you want to mail us, you can also mail us on support at the rate of affairscloud.com. And I assure you that our representative from us will be contacting you soon and resolving your issue.